Hi there. So today I want to talk about a patch called Recursion Index. Um, I'm going to talk about what it does first and then talk about the controls because I think they make more sense that way. So what it is is kind of a delay, but it's a delay made of loopers. Um, that are set up in series. So there are uh, there are three pairs or three sets of loopers that alternate read and record uh, for stereo. So that, you know one is left, one is is right. Um, and the interesting things happen in the ways that they feed back and, and change the loop material. So the first looper will pass on uh, what what goes through it into the second looper which will read that uh, and then the second looper there's a control here that determines whether or not it, it at that point feeds back into the first looper or feeds into the third looper and the third looper feeds back into the first looper. Um, when this is set all the way to zero, you can ignore this stage. Uh, when it's set all the way to one, this feedback path is closed, and anywhere in between is a mix of the two, where the feedback from the second stage, some of it goes to the first stage, and some of it gets passed on to the third stage. Um, so the interesting thing happens when you start uh, changing the, the speed and reverse of those loops. So each of the loop uh, channels, I guess, or, or stages has two controls. You can change its direction. When this button is on, it's being reversed. And you can change its pitch. Um, so if we look here, we have two stages. The first two stages are reversing the audio. And think about that. This stage is reversing the audio. The second stage is then reversing the reversed audio. So the audio starts playing forward, but it starts playing forward uh, tw at twice the speed, an octave up. Uh, and then the third stage, which some of the second stage is being fed into and some of it's going back to the first stage is slowing everything down uh, by an octave and a fifth and <clears throat> the cumulative effects of of these recursions uh, is that the the pitch you know starts going up and down uh, different lengths of audio are, are processed. So for instance, you know, every loop stage records for the same amount of time. And that's fine for our first stage, which doesn't change the pitch at all. And that's kind of fine for our second stage, which changes the pitch, uh, but can fit two iterations within that, that looping period. By the time it gets to the third stage, though, weird things start to happen because being slowed down an octave and a fifth, only about the first quarter of, of the audio that it hears gets recorded. Um, and then that gets fed back and, you know, pitched up and all of these sorts of things. So uh, it's a place where the, the that whole slash or, or hyphen speed pitch 
uh, becomes really important. Um, and so the cumulative effects is, is, you know, well, I'll just play a note. <laughs> get these uh, notes of, of raising value, uh, of rising value, and we get lower notes, and, and it really sort of fills out uh, the sonic field. Um, and so that's the, the basic structure of, of the looper. When audio comes in, you can process it through an aliaser. I really like aliasers. Um, not just because they add a lo-fi quality, but because I think they can bring out some really interesting harmonic structure. Um, so, you know, you can use that or not use it if you want to disable it. Just set the frequency to, to 24,000 uh, hertz. But a little bit, you know, can give it a, a sheen and bring out I don't know, almost like a brilliance in the sound, I think. So it's there if you want it. If not, it's not. Um, there's a feedback control for, for all the stages and, and, you know, the feedback works just like it does uh, with a delay pedal. Um, between each of the loopers is a, a VCA right here and you're essentially controlling the, the level, the volume of that VCA, how much uh, audio it allows to pass. Um, when it's set to one, uh, it will loop indefinitely, but it will also start to oscillate um, and produce a lot of gain. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it sounds cool. I don't think it, it actually ends up being that cool. Um, but you can set it up pretty high and it'll create, you know, really interesting evolving uh, patterns as the the recursions keep recurring. Um, there's a wet-dry mix uh, for your unaffected audio and then the loopers. Uh, this isn't quite balanced. It's not bad, but the loopers will tend to be a little bit louder, and that's uh, by design. I, I think, you know, it adds sort of a drama um, to the sound, but obviously you could adjust the mix up so that more of the dry signal pass through and, and change that equilibrium a little bit if you wanted to. So after they're mixed together, there's a reverb light, uh, which you know, add sort of a, an atmospheric quality. Um, and, you know, you have the standard mix and decay uh, controls for that. Um, and, you know, I really like the reverb light in this application. Uh, you may not like the fact that it affects your affected signal, but I tried routing just the loops through the reverb light and it didn't have the same quality. So, you know, the, the nice thing about placing it after the wet-dry mix is that if you don't want it, you can turn it off, for one. But if you uh, want to sort of blend your dry signal with the loops, it helps add, you know, a, a sense of shared space, I guess I would call it. Uh, and then finally at the bottom, you have a tempo. This accepts tap tempo. Or MIDI clock. If there's MIDI clock, the MIDI clock will override the tap tempo. Um, but this just lets you know how quickly your your clock is. Um, I had a clock divider originally, but if you look here, this number keeps jumping all around. And most of the time, it's fine, stable within the CPU headroom, no problems operating. Uh, I had a few instances where it loaded and I got some clipping, so I tried to cut out everything that was not absolutely necessary. Uh, so that's why the, the clock divider was removed, but if you wanted to try and sneak it in under the CPU, 
uh, here's here's the tap tempo input here's the MIDI input uh, and those go into this LFO which drives a sequencer which controls the loopers um, so you know it, it plays a lot like a delay uh, depending on whether you're using reverses and pitches and all of these sorts of things uh, that timing can be important because it doesn't continuously re record and, and delay a buffer. It, it records in segments. So it's a lot like a delay, but it's not exactly like a delay. Um, and so playing with the tempo is, I think, uh, a little bit more absolutely essential than it might be with a delay, where if you get off tempo and just sort of do your thing, the delay keeps delaying stuff. Um, so that's Recursion Index. Um, thank you. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm.